Hi girls, good morning. Welcome to week eight of Godmother Study. It is our last week. We are in chapter 13, How to Be One. And um, I'm really thankful for all this time. I feel like it kind of just flew by. Like, wow, eight weeks. Uh, we accomplished something, right? We stuck with it, we finished it. Um, yeah, I'm really, really thankful for that and um, for this book. So let's get um, our prayer opening up as in prayer and uh, jump right in. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father God, for this time together, for bringing us in unity, Lord, forever. Two or three are gathered, Lord, you are here in the midst, God. I pray for myself, Lord, for my eyes, my ears, and my heart to be open, Lord, to be your tool and your vessel, Lord, to hear from you, Father God, and share, Father God, what you would have for myself, Lord, and for everyone else watching on that side, Lord, for their eyes, their ears, and their hearts to be open, ready to receive for the feast that you've prepared for us today, Father God, Lord, to cultivate our hearts, to grow us, to strengthen us, to give us uh, bravery and courage, Father God, to walk where you're calling us, just to say, here I am, Lord, and accept it and trust, Father God, and just follow you with, with even as not knowing the outcome, Father God, to do it afraid, because with you, Father God, we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us, Father God, and for, Lord, for whoever you're putting on our hearts, Lord, to step up and step into their lives, to come alongside them along their journey with you, Father God, as our, their spiritual mentor, their Godmother, Lord, and also for ourselves. Lord, who are you calling for us to ask for that help, for that gaps to be open and closed and, and work through, Father God, and who can we glean from in these seasons? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the last chapter is kind of like a recap um, of everything we've already learned, but it kind of just links them together as far as how do we be one? You know, there's a million, there's a million ways to be a good mom, but there's not one perfect way, you know? And I really like that. Um, I don't even know who this is. She wrote that in the book. It's like a Jill Churchill, like a little quote. And that's so true. When I read that, that got me thinking like, that's so true. There's not one way to be perfect being a mom, but there's a million ways we can learn from, right? And grow and apply that um, with our kids in our home. And um, what it comes down to is there's always opportunities for us to, um, to step in to grow in, um, spiritually physically mentally right and let's strive not to miss those opportunities because being a godmother a spiritual mentor it's just about seeing a need and stepping in that need it's it's um applying ourselves to that just like with our kids right we see something that needs to be done well we step in that we don't just you know leave it a go and wait for someone else to do it it's our nature it's who god made us to be as women we're nurturers we're supporters we're encouragers right so when we come alongside each other it makes us all that more uh, strength combined and um, we know the story of Deborah, right? Uh, she was a prophetess. She was a judge in Israel when, you know, there were um, no judges. And think about it for a second because she was a woman. So there wasn't women judges in that time. But let's go all the way back, right, to Genesis God created women from men, right? Like it wasn't, women was an answer to the first problem. It wasn't like Adam wasn't the problem, but the problem was he was alone. So God created women to be the answer to the very first problem. So you see how in this book through the Bible, we all know the stories about how God loves women and he meets women where they are. You know, we see in the Bible all the time, men had to go up the mountains to talk to God. But us being women, doing our routine, taking care of our homes, running our homes, our households, our babies, our chores, our errands, God meets us where we are. 
he met the woman at the well. He went there to her in her normal routine life, right? And the same with Deborah. Deborah seen a need there, right? So she stepped up and she was the mother to Israel. You know, it, her story is in Judges. I think it's four. Um, you know, Deborah was extraordinary woman who served Israel. She was both the judge, the prophetess at once, right? And she, she would sit under a palm tree and people would come to her and get advice um, what to do. They wanted to hear from her because they trusted her. She lived the life. She wasn't just speaking it from what we you know what we see in the bible with her story but they trusted her they knew she was um on the right path she was being filled from the right well which was god she had a relationship with god you know um so in desperate times right it called for desperate measures so sometimes a godmother is needed, a mother, a nurturer, a supporter, right? We see in Judges 4, 4 through 5, Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Labadoth, was judging Israel at that time. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the people of Israel came up to her for judgment. So see, they went to her and notice how it says, now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Labadoth, if I'm saying his name right, but usually in the Bible we see, it'll say Jacob's wife, um, Joseph, and then the, any guy's name comes first before the woman's name. But if you notice, it says Deborah, a prophetess. So she's established here she had this is her rank and it just says wife of Libet libetoth or however you say his name it didn't say libetoth blah 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 you know or libetoth was the wife to deborah it was her first so see she was chosen she was um seen by god for a purpose for those for those gaps for those people you know and change requires action and action involves engagement it's the risk see when she said yeah when barack she told barack about going um against sicilla sicera well he was like i'm not going without you and it doesn't say if he was scared or if he just wandered her with him because of her basically her rank right he knew, hey, this woman's a woman of God. Like, if I have her with me, I'm covered. But um, she just stepped in without hesitation. She's like, I will go with you. So a mother, a godmother, a mentor sees a need and steps in it. And a lot of times, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard because... Um, you know, if God's putting someone on your heart, you don't know if they're going to accept you. Just being like, hey, you know how you're doing? I've been thinking about you. You know, if you need anything, I'm here. If you're doing this, like, I'm all for you. Just let me know. That requires that courage and that boldness from God, you know. As I go back with Peter getting out of that boat, he didn't hesitate. He just said, here I am. He got out of the boat. So doing something requires action, and that's where the risk is involved. There could be a risk of rejection. It could be a risk of that embrace. But even if it is that rejection, it's okay because maybe it's not the right season for them. They're not there. They have to process things. That once they get there, they're going to remember that and be like, oh, okay. And then they're going to reach out. And sometimes being on the other end of that, if we're being the God daughter who's looking uh, for that, sometimes it's hard um, to ask people for help. Uh, I'm not that type of person. If I need help with something, I'm very transparent. I'm like an open book. Just ask me. Um, but sometimes it's hard to be like, okay, I really want 
to ask so and so help me how did you do that how do you do this like show me a lot of times it's just that um you just stay you just stay back in that i'll say like in that frozen zone right because the enemy doesn't want us to ask to get that help to close that gap and move forward but it's just being like okay lord help me to have that courage to have that boldness to ask so and so hey you know blah 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 help me out here like how did you do this you know there's a lot of a lot of things with me that um if i've known someone who've already walked through something that i i'm going through or i went through it's like okay how did you do that how 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 did you wait so long how did you you know stay uh, focused on god through that because you know a lot of a lot of things circumstances come up and it's hard while we're in the waiting room to keep focused on God through it and not give up, right? To run and not grow weary. That's where the spiritual guidance comes from, you know? Like Deborah, she found herself holding dual positions, both both legal, right? Because she was the judge and then the spiritual, you know? So God has a plan and a purpose for me. He has a plan and a purpose for you. It's time to take that risk and step out if you're being called to be a God mom to someone God's putting on your heart, reach out. Be obedient to God because he sees that. Even if rejection might be on the other side of that, you did your part. And now the Holy Spirit has to work in that person. And then it's going to bring it all together in the right time. Um, I'm trying to see the thing, the thing, my notes that I wrote down. You know, everything changed when Deborah arose as mother right we've seen change there um, both judge and prophetess for two decades she recognized that israel needed so she went into action judges 4 6 she sent and summoned barak the son of i think it's abaphone from kiddish nepal and said to him has not the lord the god of israel commanded you go gather your men at mount tabor taking ten thousand from the people of Nepal, Nabatal, and the people of Zulam. So that's what I'm saying. She's seen that need and she spoke. She was, she had that courage and that braveness, right? True leaders tend, lend strength rather than pull rank. So it's about encouraging there, stepping in in that, not uh, seeing a need and talking about so-and-so for you know, oh, they don't know how to do that or look at, they just need help, they need this or that, right? Just to run, 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 run. That's when we're doling. We're doling that person, we're speaking because our words are powerful and we're speaking that and we're doling ourselves because we're not being who God called us to be when we're talking about the situation or the person rather than stepping into it. Remember, iron sharpens iron. So rather to talk about the person or the situation, if we can help and step in that, we're to do that where there's a need and speak life over that and sharpen each other because by us pouring into them, we're sharpening ourselves and we're sharpening them, right? So let's not forget about that, that it's um, at the end of the day, you know, it's all about getting the job done than doing it alone. We need each other. Two is better than one. If one falls down, the other can pick him up. Ecclesiastics 4, 9 through 11, right? Iron sharpens iron. We need each other. We're part of each other's story. We're woven together. You're part of my story and I'm part of your story. See, it's on the paths when we meet. God, God brings us together. He collides us together. And then the more we walk together, we're woven. And both of our stories is being written, you know, and when we're pouring into someone else and uh, want to help close those gaps and step in in that need we don't even realize it but god's working in us and through us and we're going on that road and accomplishing the purpose god has for us along the way our purpose and our destiny is being awoken and coming into play 
from walking alongside where God called us here, you know? And I love that because sometimes we don't even realize that, that I've been praying for this for so long and I'm still praying about it. But in the meanwhile, you know, you're being selfless and you're serving a need over here. And before you know it, you're just like, oh my gosh, like what? How did that happen? Like, I didn't even see it. And you just be like, wow, God, thank you. Like, I know that was you. Like, you're so faithful. But we're not even focused on us. Like, our issues, it, they, they come out when we're going where God has called us. When our focus is on Jesus, the right thing, we're in alignment. And we're going where he's called us. So when we're going where he's called us, our purpose comes alive and is awakened and is played out. So I love that how... There's so many women in the Bible to glean from. And I love how what we know, you know, we don't know more than what we read in the Bible, but about Deborah, just how she, I picture her as being this real mighty woman of God. And just wherever there was a need met, she just went and offered her help and wasn't afraid and just was being obedient to God, you know. Um, it's just amazing you know and god mothers are warriors we are warriors for god we are women warriors of the most high god you know when mothers awake the children of the most high god arise because we're stepping in that gap we are filling that gap we are coming alongside someone and it's like be discipled and disciple right and it's always remember to have the right motives though when we're being that god mom not to get um prideful and all like haughty like oh yeah i i know how to do this listen to me this is how you do it and it's the right attitude it's the right intentions the right heart it's you know truly truly having a heart of jesus and compassion to help someone right um to begin you know to be a god mom to someone just a mentor it's just all you need to have is a heart of a mom if you're a mom you know exactly what that is if you're not a mom yet just look at your mom to you you know uh, a mom is always, always wanting to help and, and nurture and support and just take care of someone, encourage, you know. Um, to be a mother is to be a warrior. It's we fight for life, you know. Um, look at in the physical sense, even, you know, as moms carrying babies, we're carrying life inside of us. We have to nurture that take care of that baby even that we don't see it we have to eat right you can't drink you can't smoke you can't eat certain things you have to make sure you're taking your vitamins you know so there's a lot of things that as moms we we um we uh we know how to um to step in and nurture and support when it's needed you know um mothers protect right and God is calling us as God moms, mentors, because we're going to be that spiritual mom that's going to protect, right? We don't want the wrong people or influences coming over some when we're walking alongside because they're going to go down that wrong path. They're going to get uh, stuck at a detour. Their eyes is going to not be focused on Jesus. So we need to protect those that we're nurturing and supporting as well as see our own kids we want to protect and keep safe right so who is your godmother who who do you look to for advice have you even realized it yet maybe you haven't realized it yet who is your spiritual leader who are you looking to which well are you drinking from Think about these things. Ask yourself these things if you really haven't. Or if you don't know, ask God to show you. And he will reveal that, you know. Um, are there gaps? Do you see warriors uh, fighting for you? Do you feel like you're alone? You know, are we fighting about what really matters? Think about that one. You know, are we neglecting what really matters? You know, it's important that everyone knows 
what we are against. We're not against each other. Rather than give opinions, it's time to live the truth in love, right? We're never gonna agree on everything when we're, you know, everyone is made uh, uniquely, right? We're all created differently. So when you're walking alongside someone, you might not agree on everything that they say, you know, and that's okay because we have to, uh, you know, get our advice, be encouraged and be built up. And then we bring everything in prayer to Jesus and he reveals, you know, that he'll give that confirmation. It's okay to agree to disagree at some times, you know, um, are our villages, are our villages vibrant with life? Are who we're surrounded with our tribes? Are they filled with vibrant life? Are we all on the same path or are some of your tribe pulling you down do you feel intimidated do you feel stupid if you don't go along with them and you know you're going to serve Jesus but they're doing this so you know you want to do that right that's where it comes time to check who we're hanging with check which wells you're getting fed from that you're drinking from who's pouring into you you know whose actions are you looking at right because moms, mothers, godmothers, spiritual mentors see problems and move quickly towards a solution. We're ready. We want to help. You know, having a mother's heart begins with blessing others in the very areas we once felt cursed. So, it's again, it's seasons. It's where we've walked through. It's the, gl the gleaning. We've done walk through that season. So, our wisdom and knowledge is for others to come and glean from something that we've done walk through that maybe that was a hard time and you know she's going through that exact same thing but you got to have that heart that you want to pour into them and it's blessing that season it's speaking life over that to help them get through it because you already walked through that that's where you know what we go through our tests become our testimonies for others our messes become our message right it's what we share it's uh, how we give god praise and glory and honor for getting us through that you know what i've done went through in my life in different things big and small it's for um others it's for others to glean from on how to get there if you guys you know want to know something if you know something about me ask me call me message me i'm I'm here, I will help as much as I can. Um, don't feel inferior or intimidated that you can't with me because I um, I just wanna share God's word and come alongside you and help you focus on God and get through the hard things because the hard things is not fun when you're by yourself going through those hard things, you know? Um, God daughters who want to hear what you have learned. So that's just what I'm just what I'm saying there. Like, I want to help you, you know, things that I've learned. And, you know, I don't have all the answers for everything. But God helped me through those seasons uh, and spoke with me about them on how to how to let you glean from those and, and share and pour into you. Right. Um, there's so much things that as women, you know, we have to offer. It's, you know, uh, the God daughters, you know, it's the single moms, you know, they need to hear also to be encouraged that, Hey, you're the mom, you're the dad, you know, um, uh, that they're heroes and should be helped in every way. As Lisa talks about here in the book, you know, divorced women to know, you know, that they are not alone, you know? Um, sometimes it's like, uh, it's, we have all these labels and us as women, you know, let's not look at those labels, but just offer our hearts and be the mouth of Jesus, the hands of Jesus, the, you know, the feet of Jesus, you know, let's don't miss our strength in the current seasons. Let's not miss what God is calling us to, right? Um, speaking in someone's life or needing someone to speak in our life. Everyone needs someone, no matter the age, you know, or examples, because we can all reach each other um, on our, you know, different different seasons that we're in, or even if you're a little bit younger or older, but, you know, sometimes it's a younger that's going to reach the younger. 
Sometimes, you know, it's the older that'll reach the older, but sometimes it's the older that's gonna reach the younger because it's the season, you know? Um, it's being called uh, to the younger generation, you know, from the older to the younger to the next. And I believe that from the older generation, you know, all the years with Jesus on this journey and the people God has put in my life that I'm that middle. So it, who's the next generation under? It's the younger girls, right? So who's pouring into them? Who's speaking to them? Who, uh, you know, who can reach them on what, you know, we've already walked through? Relationships, boyfriends, heartaches, friendships, um, the hard things because they're in that season and they need to be spoken life over and give godly advice and godly examples on how to get through those things as they're coming up and to keep their focus on Jesus and he's going to help them walk through that so it's all you know the different ages and you know I love how God um has us all together in one season but and he knows who needs who for what season we're all walking in you know um uh, teenage girls you know might relate easier to uh younger married girls or girls who's not married yet like maybe 13 14 year olds can relate to like the 18 19 because they're close to walking through that season with boyfriends and heartaches and all that comes along with teenage stuff right versus young younger married women I'm not that old but they might relate more on our season being in that middle age you know what I mean so there's a, a god mom a god daughter for everyone we all need each other you know faithful godmothers Lift the name of Jesus, the words of Jesus, and the ways of Jesus over and above their own. So it's all about sharing Jesus above our own opinions, above our own uh, wanting to tell you how to do things and things like that. We're all part of each other's story and we're all linked by God, you know. Um, it's uh, grow in godliness then there is less of us and more of Christ. Like, I think it's John 3, 30, right? More of you and less of us. Um, you know, in, in the older women profess Christ, the younger women profess Christ. We all do. So let's step up and step in where it's needed, you know? And Titus, it talks a lot about, uh, I love Titus, uh, about be discipled and disciple about mentoring Titus 2 1 through 2 your duty is to teach them to embrace a lifestyle that is consistent with sound doctrine lead the male elders into disciplined lives full of dignity and self-control urge them to have a solid faith generous love and patient endurance so see it's we're to embrace that lifestyle be discipled and discipled you know um, People hear what you say, but follow what we model, you know, and it's uh, Titus was Paul's son in faith. So who is our daughters in faith? Who are we discipling? Who are we speaking into? But most importantly, are we living it? See, we are to model what we speak. I can say I'm a Victoria's Secret model. Does that make me one? No. So, see, our words, we can say whatever we want, but are we living what we're sharing? Are we living what we're encouraging? Are we living what we're preaching? That's the key. Because remember, we're women of influence. Someone's always watching. If it's in our home, when it's out and about, are we living in our home how we are out and about? Or are we living out and about different and then when we're home we're a you know ugly and nasty person god is always watching us first and foremost we cannot fool him we might be able to fool others but we can't fool him so someone is always watching right titus knew the gospel because he watched paul live the gospel are we living out the gospel for others to follow you know how are we doing that we're women of influence someone's always watching remember that that is the most important thing because if i'm gonna tell you to do this 
uh, yeah, you know, it's not good to, to, to drink and get drunk, you know, being you know, like younger and, you know, you got to serve God and read and pray every day and stay away from that and stay away from people who do, who's doing that. And then tomorrow night there's a wedding or a party and the same person that I'm speaking that to, they're going to see me with a beer in my hand, taking a shot or drunk right so am i living what i'm preaching absolutely not is that person gonna want to trust me again probably not is that person gonna come to me with an issue in that situation probably not because hey she just told me something don't do it but but look at her she's over there doing what she told me not to do so see it's living out the gospel someone's always watching and and more so these days to you know um taking that step saying yes to jesus um it's taking a stand it's to be faithful and be obedient to him and you know on social media we, we might forget at sometimes we might like in the moment but there's instagram there's facebook there's snapchat we all post, we all share what we're doing, who's, who we're all with and all that, right? Which is fun and amazing. I love them. Not knocking social media at ever. But people still watching us on social media. So are we living out the gospel on social media? Right? Because everyone who follows you or, you know, your friends with is seen. So if you're preaching, don't do drugs, don't drink and you're on your social media posting booze and you're all drunk and getting high or whatever the case may be, everyone's seeing that. So see, it leaves a bad taste in someone's mouth. So it's living by the gospel. And this is one of the things that God has always put on my heart. And it's, it's, always, uh, it's always there that I'm always, you know, um, always paying attention to that hoping striving at my own self to live what i'm preaching because there is someone always watching i have two girls raised that i'm raising in my home first and foremost and a son but it's everyone who sees me on social media in person right am i living out the gospel you know because the older and the younger women were together on this learning journey so we're going to learn from each other we're going to make mistakes no one's perfect but it's that striving to do better to let go of the things of the world when we take that stand in ministry and step up and share god's word preach god's word encourage in god's word right the older women are the ones who are best equipped to teach the younger because they've done walk through those seasons so they're going to be living out that gospel this is the invitation for you to embrace your age and the strength that comes with your stage of life it's the best way we can do this is to honor god in all that we do in our actions in our words right um trying to see where what else did i write here uh let's see we are empowered to release the blessing that turn the unfavorable circumstances around to favorable because we're going to speak life over that we're going to speak god's word in that gap and god's word does what it's set out to do it's alive it's breathing it goes and does what it's intended to do every time, right? Let's not adopt the role as an accuser and curse the very ones God desires us to bless. That's when it goes to talk about people behind their back or situations that we see or, you know what, let's step into that. Let's offer ourselves, and if we don't have anything good to say, let's not say anything, right? That shows our maturity level. Words reveal our maturity. And that is the best way because we speak out of our heart, right? So if we're speaking foolish, we're immature, right? But if we're going to speak with godly wisdom and knowledge, it's going to show our maturity level and our relationship with the Father, right? And our actions, our actions reveal more so our maturity level. Because like I said, our words, right? I can say I'm this and I'm that. But our actions overrule actions speak louder than words right it's to control ourselves uh, you know we 
all fail in many areas, but especially with our words, right? That's the hardest thing. We, you know, we uh, are to control ourselves in every way. You know, we need that self-control. Our self-control needs to be revealed in our speech, in our speech when we're speaking into gaps, when we're speaking just our everyday lives, you know? Um, I do not understand or agree. I'm, this is out of the book. Uh, I circled this. I do not understand or agree with but that does not mean I have to give my opinion to the masses. So that is like agree to disagree with everything. And it's Proverbs 26, 20. Fire goes out without wood and quarrels disappear when gossip starts. So see, if even if I don't agree with you, I'm not to go talk about it and go talk about it and keep adding or gossip when we hear something because the more gossip keeps going around, the more we keep talking that negative and and not being the our the the voice of Jesus, the arms of Jesus, the feet of Jesus, when we're just being in our fleshy, ugly self, we're keeping that fire going. So it's up to us to be that that mother as Deborah did and step into that and speak life over that and to cut gossip out and not keep the fire going on that, you know. Um, if it's not our fire, if it's not, you know, happening in, in, in us, it's let's stop adding wood to it. But then let's turn around and see, like, reverse it. Let's reverse it. That chiastic structure, reversal of that destiny. It's not our fire, so let's not add wood to it. We are supposed to step into that and speak life over that. To cut out that fire and not keep building it but to speak the truth, the living water over it, that's gonna die out that fire, right? The word of God, let's live it. Let's live it to our fullest. Let's strive to it. You know, love requires learning. We are always gotta be wanting to learn and never reach that level of, oh yeah, I know, I know it all. Or I don't need to learn no more. I already know everything, no. We always need to learn because different seasons call for learning different things and renewing our mind daily. We need to learn daily. We need to uh, hear what God is teaching us and sharing and whispering in our hearts to help us and then to help others. So it's always, always more learning, you know. Um, we're woven together, you know. Um, we are you know being watched we're leading by example um hiding or opting out is not an option we can't we can't do that unless maybe you go live like in alaska somewhere by yourself then no one's ever going to see you but you know we're woven together so um let's embrace our seasons our years you know our youth uh our you know motherhood our being um a wife being that spiritual mentor being in the ministry you know let's behave wisely and kindly let's make time to reflect on our own because we have to uh deal with ourselves first before we can help someone else right we can't just go help everyone else while we're still a big old mess right and god will come in and do that to us titus 2 7 through 8 Above all, set yourself apart as a model of life nobly lived. With dignity, demonstrate integrity in all that you teach. Bring a clear, wholesome message that cannot be condemned. And then your critics will be embarrassed with nothing bad to say about us. That just says it all. Uh, Titus, read it, study it. It's so, it's so good. There's so much good gleaning nuggets to learn from this with Timothy um and you know titus paul all of them and it's being discipled and discipled it's training us and then training others it's so it's so good you know it's it's just it's nurturing others it's um stepping in and stepping up you know we are noble because of our heavenly birthright um with our with jesus so like i said god makes us uh worthy and capable to share and he gives us the abilities that we need you know when we're going through that different road for our own self he makes he makes the pathway right he's already called us we just have to say yes remember that and he gives us what we need you know to what he's called us to do you know um 
being a God uh, mother, a spiritual mentor to others, you know, it's being aware, it's acknowledging, it's engaging, you know, it's praying, uh, it's, it's praying, it's faith, and then it's waiting. And in that waiting, we have to, you know, uh, be faithful, you know, even the things we don't know, you know, it's seasons gleaning from, it's being real, it's being transparent, you know, um, it's being that, um, uh, he say the arms, the feet of Jesus, you know, uh, it's preparing the way as John did. It's being that person that's preparing the way for Christ, you know, to step into those seasons and to steward them well, you know. Um, we're responsible to simply offer, you know, how can I help you? You know, um, your invitation, others will, you know, uh, just offer our help step in that it's engage with one another remember take that risk get out of that boat and just go where God has called you you know you see God daughters respond to them it's acknowledging in them you know uh, the being aware is praying ask God to open your eyes you know who's potential God daughters um, who is the God moms right it's being available you know asking uh, everyone's busy, but it's just asking you to set time aside, right? Just have that time aside that, okay, I'm going to shoot out that text really quickly or that fast little phone call, just like, hey, I'm here, you need me, cool. You know, it's being authentic. You know, it's don't say one thing and live another. It comes back to living out the gospel. Like, we don't want to be fake because someone is always watching us, you know, or to... Uh, live out what we preach, you know, in our homes and out. It's be active, you know, let's be all about the Father's business and not ourself, you know. Virtuous women are a force for good. So let's engage. Let's engage with one another. Picking up the phone, calling someone, like you said, you know, hopping on social media and encouraging words, shooting out that text, you know. It's being an advocate. Uh, we all need people in our lives who encourage you know I need to be encouraged um, I need to be encouraged through Christ uh, you guys need to be encouraged through Christ to keep us um, on our the path and not get weary and not get burned out you know just just to hear that uh, encouragement you know and it's um, it's celebrating with those people you know it's moving their feet in the right direction it's uh you can be an advocate for the person without endorsing everything they do see it comes down to i'm gonna walk life with you i'm gonna speak life with you i'm gonna pour into you you know while still correcting in love if they're doing something that you don't agree with you don't have to endorse that part of them you don't have to say oh no it's okay god knows your heart no you have to speak the love over them you have to correct with love and discipline with love being that god mom is not uh something to take lightly because whatever you're telling that person they're trusting you they're gonna listen to you and follow what you're telling them so if you're helping someone, you know, and some of the things that they do are not of God, it's still of the world, then you just have to speak the life over that and show them in God's word that, you know, that's not, you know, that's not godly, right? Do it all in love. You know, people are afraid to speak up on behalf of others for the fear that the gap will be turned on them. See that fear? Remember the frozenness that the enemy wants to keep us there? Let's not. And let's remember, we have to do it in love, you know. Um, this scripture, I love this scripture, and she has it in her book. It's Isaiah 58, 12. You'll use the old rubble of past lives to build anew. Rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known to those who can fix anything. Restore old ruins. Rebuild and uh, rejuvenate make the community livable again that is the definition of a godmother a spiritual mentor we speak life in the old we rebuild with the word of god right to put put them on the same path you know um jesus speaks you know about um being you know with the peace being peacemakers blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god matthew 5 9. So it's um, the peacemakers. Who is our? Who is the Prince of Peace? Jesus. 
right? So when we're focused on Jesus, you know, it ain't everything don't come easy, but we're focused on him. So we're going to have peace in everything that we do. We're going to be in tune with Jesus in listening, you know. Uh, we discover who we really are by helping others. You know, we're woven together. Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron. Ecclesiastics 4, 9 through 11. Two are better than one. If one falls down, he can help him up. You know, let's learn to work together rather than compete and fight, right? You know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You know, let's focus on him and all follows. You know, peace is not always quiet. Peace is not everything in its place. Peace is not everything perfect. Peace is found when we know where we place our trust, right? Peace can be quiet day of fasting and solitude. Peace wraps us up like a blanket in seasons of deep grief and pain. Peace warms our lives like sunshine in a season of joy. Peace is our early morning sunrise. Peace is glorious. It's a glorious sunset. Peace is not found in compromise, right? Sorry. Uh, peacemakers are not always passive. Peace always finds its way to those who are brave enough to make it. Like, wow, right? And remember, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is the source of peace. So when we have Jesus, when we're focused on the right thing, we're going to be walking in peace. We're going to be walking that right path because we're drinking from the right faucet. We are women of influence, and when we're following Jesus, we're being the women of influence of Jesus. That woman of Jesus, wow, she's a woman of God. Like, you can see that on her. That's how I want to be remembered and um, be thought of when women, you know, anyone, women, men, children, be like, Chantel, oh, yeah, she, she loves Jesus. And she lives Jesus, not just speaks it. That's how I want to be remembered. See, I want to leave that legacy when I'm not here no more. If, uh, if it's before the rapture or whatever, but for my babies. See, I got three babies. I have nieces. I have nephews. I, I have friends. But to be remembered as um, leaving that legacy as, as a woman of God, a woman of influence for the king, but not only speaking it, that I also lived it. You know, it's walk forward and walk wise and bravely, trusting that God will weave us together and, and uh, trust him. See, I want to be remembered as that, as, oh, that, like, Chantel, she really was the arms and the feet of Jesus. I see how, you know, she would help that. And, oh, she helped me do this. She, you know, we was woven together and she kept me on the right path. And, you know, just all things for the glory of God, you know, and it's, it's leaving that. And remember, it's people's watching us. So we're right in, Jesus is right in our story. Obviously, every day it's being written. But how are we embracing that? Are we embracing that for him? or for the world? Are we embracing that for self, you know, for our own self or for others, you know? So who is that? Who is that spiritual leader that you're looking up to? Um, again, if you don't know who it is, ask God and he will bring her to you. He will make a way for you guys to connect, you know? And uh, I'm here if you guys ever need anything. Um, younger older whatever seasons to encourage to talk to inspire as well as reach out to me too because i still need that i still need gaps you know that um that need filled and seasons i haven't walked through you know i just want to connect with all you guys on our journeys together and and step in when i can to help to mother and um just be the hands the arms and the feet in the voice of jesus god bless you guys all who followed and came and 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 spoke encouragement because it really meant a lot to me and i'm so excited that i had this opportunity and um i'm kind of sad that that it's over and that i read the whole book already because i'm kind of like i want to read it again on certain things but today was really long i hope you guys stuck with it and listen it's the last week um i have something up um uh thinking about and praying about and i'll be posting about it soon if anyone wants to partake in that um i posted about it a while ago but the details and all that it's do it afraid by joyce myers amazing 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 so much to glean from in just the first few chapters 
Um, so yeah, God bless you guys. And uh, remember you are women of influence. Let's live out the gospel everywhere we go and not just speak it. Let's remember we are called to others. We're woven together. Let's sharpen each other. Let's speak life over each other and step into that, you know, and, and let's not miss what God is doing right here in our season right now. He's anointing us right now. Let's not miss it and get tired of the waiting, but hang on. Let's not. Let's just hang on. Who is God sending at this time in our life right now to anoint our head as Samuel did with Saul, right? Who is he sending? Who is he sending to anoint? Let's not miss it. Let's hold tight and just focus on God for it all to come and his timing it will come, right? Let's not go ahead and, and miss and get impatient as we know Saul did, right? When he was coming to, get, to be anointed and uh, on God's timing, but he went ahead on his time. So let's wait and be patient. And in the waiting, you know, reach out to someone. Give someone a call to be encouraged in the season that you're in right now. And uh, God bless you guys. And uh, I'll see you.